what does our environment, our quality of life look like 20, 30, 50 years from now? If we continue to subscribe to the priorities and the value sets of the present. We take Hawaii for granted and it's all of our responsibility to really think about that and think about what we're gonna do instead of taking it for granted to do to perpetuate what makes this place so special or it's gonna be lost. It's just that simple. This isn't a doom and gloom message. It's really simple. If you don't care about those things and you let them go away, they're lost forever. And away on us if that's what we're leaving as the inheritance to our children. key to our future is dependent on the concept of sustainability, a word we hear often these days. What does it mean and how do we get there? It's not just about going green or our energy supply. Sustainability is a, a word that has many meanings depending on who you talk to. Um, there's economic sustainability, cultural sustainability, ecological and environmental sustainability. In general, however, I think it means how do you maintain and meet the needs of the present without exploiting the resources of the people so that those in the future have what they need. So as a sustainability has an equation that says do what you need now without compromising the ability of others to do what they need or achieve what they need later. And from a Hawaiian standpoint, the Ahupua'a principles practiced by a people that lived in the Pacific for thousands of years in the absence of ships, boats, and planes, that they live sustainably. And a very simple way, maybe an oversimplified definition, would be self-sufficiency through interdependence, where each of us does what we need to do based on what our capacities and strengths are in such a way that we contribute to the community and our collective contributions produce something that is good for us all. Self-sufficiency through interdependence. I believe this is sustainability for us in Hawaii. Sustainability is really about living pono and in lokahi, or harmony with each other and everything around us. Lokahi is simply the balance of all things. In the triangulation of EO at the top, uh, human beings at one corner and the aina. And aina includes both the ocean and the land. As the three points of importance and in balance because we all need each of these points in order to establish a righteous place. And when I say righteous, I don't mean uh, the church kind of righteous. I mean righteous in terms of our ability to live in the Garden of Eden every day of our life and take care of it. So to me, that is what Pono is. If you look back um, pre-Western times, there are things that are written that you had well over a million people living in Hawaii, totally self-sustainable. And it, so it just begs the question, you know, how could these people out in the middle of the Pacific, this little island, sustain a million people? It was because of their adherence to values. It was because of their adherence to recognize that they had kulian and responsibility to everything that was given to them in the, in the form of the fish in the sea, the animals that were in the mountain, the plants that grew on the land, the water that came from the sky down the mountains into the streams. They all had kulian and responsibility. They recognized that there was something greater than them. And we call it El Zakua for us. And we have a responsibility and when you um, Auntie Nanaviri would always talk about uh, the, when she mentioned Lokahi, there's a, a strong relationship between man, God, and nature. And you never forget that. Sustainability is the interconnection of all things. It's how we import and consume things, how we treat our environment, to how we dispose of our waste. Every choice we make personally affects the people around us, the land and the sea, and our economy. Each choice is critical for today and the future. I think there's a general feeling, you go around, you talk to anybody across the islands, that 
we might be, we feel like we're heading in the wrong direction. And there's a sense of what we should be about. We should be about community. We should be about being good stewards to our land and natural resources. You know, we should be about self-sufficiency to a large extent, be able, able to not be so dependent on others. And so we know that future exists. But the real big question is how do we get there? We have to do things in our own lives. We all have to ask ourselves, what can we do uh, to get there? And those things taken together uh, make a big difference. It all comes down to making personal choices about what we want for ourselves, our family, and the future of this place. Perhaps the one best example of someone choosing to make changes to live a more sustainable life is our own Jason Scott Lee. From Hawaii to Hollywood, from Hollywood to life. The reason why I'm in a fairly remote location on the, on the Big Island is, you know, I was already in the movies and in the, in, the, in the machine of it all. And I was living in hotels and flying in airplanes and, and, and that lifestyle just got, I got sick of it. So I found this nice quiet place with a lot of rainfall and some incredible vegetation around. This is the, for me, my best approach that I could think of that would allow me to be a better human being. And so planting my food and growing the food and, and thanking Keokua and God that it's actually growing because it's not me that's doing the growing, it's, it's something beyond me. And the more you work with it, with that mindset, the stronger connection to life. And I think the only thing we have in our life is Allah. And when you see that happening, that's Allah being cultivated right before your eyes. I, I kind of take the words of, of Gandhi uh, Mahatma Gandhi in that, you know, um, you got to be the change you want to see in the world. That means if anything's going to change, anything at all, for the good, how I see what is good, I got to start with me. And so to better be a better human being, I got to malama aina. To, in order to malama aina, you have to know a little bit about the aina. And so, to take care of it means really to take care of ourselves because the, the fallacy is that it is there and we are here. And when that's the truth of it is that we are one. So if we malama aina, we're not taking care of just the forest and the ocean, we're taking care of ourselves. And that brought back the essence of aloha. It's the epitome of education to me. It is the, the core of the education, first and foremost, to learn sensitivity and to learn your responsibility and, and all those other subtleties of, of awareness, awareness for your neighbor, awareness you know, for the plant, awareness for how much you use your car or whatever. The time is now to make it happen. Uh, we all need everybody's help and, and it can be difficult but with Laulima and many hands making light work it can be fun uh, so it's going to take everybody out.